What's going on, y'all? So <sighs> What's going on, y'all? Let me just tell y'all this. First of all, excuse my voice. My, I already told y'all on my community post what's going on. So if my voice sounds a little bit more raspier or deeper, it's because of that. But I am so glad that I did not watch this last night. Now, last night, I literally, when I told y'all on that post that I was resting, I was in this bitch just laid out. I was in here just laid out, okay? But um, I'm so glad I didn't watch this because I would have been so mad that I couldn't come to the uh, screen, this camera, and just start talking about it a little bit because... <sighs> The way I am so disappointed, the way I am so disgusted, the way that I am so irked by this show right about now, and it's because of this particular episode, and you guys already know exactly what situation I am talking about. We have dealt with the majority of this whole show the whole time, and we know these people for the most part, but this one particular scene with this one particular character, <sighs> let's just go. Okay, let me just, let me get myself together. We know it's just a TV show, but it just irks us so much. And I'm saying us because y'all be feeling me in the comments because I be saying it, y'all be agreeing. And I be like, okay, we here. We on the same page. This whole situation. Like, Tyler, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Like, ugh, I mean, is it not any other way to make drama? Like, who does this in... Um, anyway, it ain't real life. It's fictional. But, again, we're upset more so for this show because you're talking about real friendships that could actually be happening. You know, these are real scenarios that could actually happen, but then you exaggerate them to the point that it's like, that's so unbelievable, and why are you doing this? This would never happen, and if it has, I don't understand what's going on with your friend group that y'all don't tell each other oh, this nigga's the one that was this and this is the one that was that. I don't get it. I don't get it. But anyway, baby, we back. Another episode of Sister, Season 5, Episode 18, Friends and Lovers, or Friends Are Lovers. So we pick up where we left off last week with the whole big fight in Melee that happened down there at the um restaurant. You know, niggas acting an ass, okay? That's just basically what it is. That's just what it is. Zach was just so quick to anger because I understand what was going on. You know, you thinking that Karen set you up, which Karen did not set him up. Karen did not set him up. And let me just put this out here for y'all. Y'all keep on saying it was... It had to be Fatima and Angela's friend, Belinda. Now, I know who Belinda is. I know how that bitch, like, she a dirty bitch, okay? We already know that. But see, what y'all not listening and did not grasp is that when Angela was talking to Fatima in the house and she was talking about, are you sure that your friend, you know, she can be trusted or whatever? Because, you know, the last time, that one time that I actually met her, you know, she was a little... So why would she say that about Belinda if Belinda is her homegirl and they all been friends and they all, this is somebody completely new. That's why I say at this point, it's not Belinda that set him up, okay? It is actually Zach. I mean, not Zach, but I feel like it's Angela that did it. I really do at this point. I don't feel like it was Karen, at the, especially after tonight's episode. It damn sure wasn't Karen. And I don't feel like it was a Belinda. Belinda is not even in the picture. It is somebody that just so happens to have met Fatima one time or whatever, or whatever. And she got a bad feeling about her. Like, not necessarily a bad feeling, but like, you know, a weird feeling. That's what Fatima said. So you have to pay attention to the words that are coming out of some of these people's mouth because they give you a little clues. That bitch don't know who the lady is. And truth be told i feel like it wasn't even that person it literally was angela who did all this stuff you conveniently just here and why would you set your friend up like that why would you set your friend up like that and again again the only belinda knows zach and fatima is together that's fine but they're not even talking or whatever and i don't even think angela and belinda talking like that as well y'all can correct me if i'm wrong but also how was this friend supposed to know Zach and how this friend know Karen she couldn't go to another shop baby Angela girl come up with something else anyway so they at the uh at the restaurant 
just fighting. I mean, at this point, I ain't even going to say who won. Nobody won that fight because they both was getting each other. Like, if at one point Zach was beating Aaron's ass, another point Aaron was beating Zach ass. And they was just tag teaming each other. Okay? And it was a lot. Truth be told, Aaron, you should have shut your mouth a little bit. You know what? Well, I ain't going to say that because when Karen, when he, when Zach grabbed Karen, I understood why Aaron got up. I understood why Aaron got up. I understood why he reacted the way that he reacted. Um, because what man, if you want to date with somebody, if you with somebody, what person in general is just going to allow somebody else to come in and just start hollering at the person that you with? Like, no, that's disrespectful as hell. You not going to do that. And then you a man coming at this woman like that, regardless of how we feel about Karen, you know what I'm saying? The way that exact came in that it was just totally wrong. So I'm not mad at the melee that happened. Um, you know. Andy was like, come on, we got to get up out of here. And then somebody go say something. I think it was Karen. He got a big door. We got to get out of here. I said, no, go through the front, bitch. Go through the front, girl. Ain't nobody got it. Y'all ain't that important. And then for the um the, the owner of the restaurant or whoever you was to come talk about someone, we called the police. And then Fatima was like, girl, fuck you and the police. And then Angela was like, call me. I said, see, you know, Brandy, I get it, but you know. Girl, we, we in a life or death situation right about now. We could be locked up and you up here telling him to call you. But, okay, fine. So, then they get to the house. Angela is going back and forth. Now, see, this whole dialogue between Angela and Fatima just did not need to happen as long as it happened. She said, girl, I'm not finna come back with you. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. You sure? Girl, I'm sure. You sure? Okay, okay. I said, bitch, if you say you're sure and okay one more time. She is sure for the umpteen time. She's not coming back with you. You don't need to stay. Zach is right there. Leave, okay? Moving on from that, Zach get up in the house. And, you know, Fatima trying to fix his hand up or whatever. And this whole conversation, and I hate the way that this is going. I really hate the way that they are messing up the characters of Zach and Fatima. And we've discussed this already. The way that this whole situation went down didn't even need to happen. It didn't need to happen, y'all. Okay, like, you know, the whole... you, I would be understanding at the fact that my man or my person, you know, I'm putting myself in their shoes. My man been through so much. I've been through so much. We both got baggage. And then you come in and you accuse me of this. And you show me a picture. Did you really expect a person that's like him would suggest, you know, be calm, cool, and collected? And I am so glad. I am so glad that he called her out on her stuff and said, so you mean to tell me. You trying to tell me to calm down or whatever, but you can be out here beating bitches' asses, you know, fucking them up in lockers and all this stuff, but yet you want to tell me to calm down when you put a picture up in my face and somebody accusing me of doing something that I didn't do. And she said, well, the only difference is that, you know, I ain't got a record, but you do. And I said, well, that do make sense, but at the same time, you still being hypocritical as fuck. If you don't want him to get in trouble or whatever and to be so quick to anger, you need to do the same thing, Fatima, okay? That's one. Them two going back and forth and, you know, just arguing about this. And I'm like, what the hell about we arguing, okay? You know, of course he going to be upset if Karen sent uh, you You put it out there basically trying to make it seem like, you know, she possibly, you even if you didn't say that Karen was the one who took the picture, why wouldn't you think that he would think that, she possibly would have been the one that set it up if he knew that he didn't do anything, you know. And now he's thinking in his head, yeah, she was way too nice to me. She was doing this and she never nice to me. So, you know, all of this stuff. So now y'all still getting into it. And I'm sitting here like, just break up at this point. And I hate to say this because a relationship shouldn't be this damn stressful. And y'all, I don't even know if they are a year into the relationship. It should not be this goddamn stressful, okay? It's so many stuff that keep on coming. So much stuff keep coming at them. And I'm just like, end it, end it, end it at this point. Y'all not ready. Y'all not ready. Y'all need to go because it's just, it's just too much drama. And I'm just tired of it at this point. It was cute at the beginning. It's over. I'm over it now, okay? And then... When she was like, I'm finna go to bed and you finna come sleep down on the couch. And I was, I was like, first of all, if it's a guest room, bitch, I ain't sleeping up in no, um, this, y'all only got a one bedroom house. What type of house or duplex is that? You only got a one bedroom, bitch? No. 
I'm sleeping in the other room if that's the case, you know. But, you know, I get she telling him to sleep on the couch or whatever. And he got upset. He was like, I ain't sleeping on the couch in my own house. And yo, what? In my own house. That's what I'm saying. And I understood where Zach was coming from. But, of course, Fatima took that and... She got upset. She was like, see, I was waiting for when you was going to say that. I was waiting for when you was, this was going to come up. You know, I'm finna leave. I'm finna leave. Blue, blue, blue. I said, bitch, leave then. Uh, 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 uh. I'm just so tired of all the drama. I'm so tired of, you know, her having so much baggage all of a sudden. Like, damn. You get upset because he said in my home. Technically speaking, it is his home that he built and all this stuff and put money into and you just a guest or whatever. But he did say it's y'all's, but you un you knew exactly what he was talking about. He wasn't trying to make it seem like you ain't got no part in it. He was just pissed. It's just what people say when they get mad or whatever. And the fact that you took it so seriously as if he was trying to take you out and, and say that you have no possession towards it or whatever. And I'm just sitting here like, we really about to do this. Now we about to have an argument over this because he said his own home. Okay. Meaning this is my house as much as it's your house. And you really want me to sleep on my own stuff. You know, when I can go sleep in our bed, you know what I'm saying? You want me to sleep on the couch when I can go sleep on the bed and you want me to sleep on the couch in my own home, our home. Wait, it would have been better if he would have said our, like, it don't sound right. But, I mean, I get it. Ugh, I just feel like it was just too much. And then, you know, she finna go. And she winds up leaving. She about to go to a hotel. She calling Andy, telling her she gonna be a little bit late or whatever to work. Because she about to go to a hotel. And Andy said, no, nah, come over to the crib, right? So, Andy at the crib. Now, see, when all this stuff let went down and Andy and them left... Um, Andy had went over there to, to, to Karen's, okay? And Karen tried to get in on Andy's ass. And I'm sitting here like, it's a lot of bullshit that was going on in this episode that was disturbing me, that was irritating me. Because at the end of the day, I don't know why is it such a hard concept for people to understand that if this person didn't do nothing to me, I can be cool with them just because you got a little issue with them that ain't involving me or anybody else. It ain't physical. It ain't nothing or whatever. I can still be cool with them. I don't talk about your stuff with them and they don't talk about your stuff with me. Okay. And, and vice versa. We ain't got to do that. We can be literally neutral. And that is what Andy has been doing. Andy is not going back telling Karen what Fatima said if Fatima said something about Karen. Karen and Andy is not going over there to tell Fatima what Karen said if Karen got something to say. Andy is literally the definition of being neutral and, and, and she can't help the fact that she liked Fatima. So because you have an unrational dislike for this girl because she's dating your ex, somebody that she didn't even know you. She didn't even know you. You have an issue with her and she didn't even know you. She didn't know Zach. She didn't know Zach was associated with this group or anything. And now you upset at that and you're going to hold her to the fire to that. And you're going to be upset at Andy because she cool with her and she don't dislike her just because you do. Because of the fact that, you know, she, he, he doing for her that he ain't do for you. But that you got a whole man that's trying to do for you the stuff that you actually want. Girl, get over it. Get over it. It, it ain't going to work like that. I'm not going to feel that. I'm not finna be here for it. You can take that and you can shove it. Okay. Gonna cuss Andy out talking about some. You knew. You knew. Okay. Yeah. She knew that she knew about the picture, but she didn't know that she was gonna go over there and confront Zach like that. And Zach was gonna, um, you know, say something about it and, and, and go off the way that he did. Okay. That's just that. You can't put that on her. You cannot put that on her. You know what I'm saying? How did she know that you was going to be at the restaurant? How did she know that you was going to, um, he was going to come there that day? How did she know that? And I get it. She was like, well, give your friend a heads up that, you know, Fatima know about this or whatever. But again, she was trying to be neutral and she didn't think it was that big of a deal. And if it was an issue, she probably would have told her if Fatima said, you can go ahead and tell her whatever you can ask and all that stuff. I don't know. Like. And Karen, like, I can see all the sides, but at the same time, it was just the way that she just snapped off on her, like, it's Andy's responsibility to be up in the midst of this shit. This is y'all shit. This ain't got nothing to do with her, okay? And then you cussing her out and telling her to get the hell out, and basically y'all not friends. And when Andy said, she was like, why you ain't tell me? Because I ain't want to betray her. Oh, so you could betray me? You could betray me? I said, girl, 
Girl, and see, I'm so glad for the episode that's coming on next week. Andy gonna tell that bitch. I can be, you can't tell me who the fuck to be friends with. I can be friends with whoever I want to, okay? That's just it. I can be neutral. None of this shit got anything to do with me. You the one that's putting me in the middle of this shit. And I said, you know what? You right, baby. I probably would have been dumb Karen at this point. And you know what? This goes to show the testament of a real friendship, I feel, in a sense. Because this would be the prime opportunity that somebody would have probably just said, you know what, girl? You doing too much. I'm going to have to see you later. Now, when you get your shit together, we can start talking again. But other than that, we ain't got nothing to say. I don't have nothing to say to you. You ain't got something to say to me because you doing the absolute most. But you can see that Andy really care about Karen. They do got a deeper bond because Andy's still sticking it in there and she's still trying to salvage this little friendship because, you know, they have gone through a whole bunch. You know, Karen used to get up in Andy's ass about Gary and we was 100%, well, I was 100% there for her when she was doing all of that, you know, because it needed to be said. You need to get away from this man. You being dumb about this man and now the roles are reversed. And Andy is getting in Karen's ass and Karen can't take that shit. She can't take the shit. And it's just like, girl, don't dish what you can't take, okay? And that's basically it. She told her to get the fuck out. <laughs> Aaron had to tell her, you know, you're going to have to say you apologize. You're going to have to say you sorry. And Andy got on Aaron's ass too, you know. And on the sense, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence of... Should she have? Now, see, Erin, you making me upset because I feel like I've been defending you this whole uh, episode and a half because I understand why you did what you did at the restaurant. And at the same time, I'm sitting here like, Andy, I mean, Zach was out of line and he was protecting Karen. Karen is pregnant. You know, he doing a lot for somebody that ain't his baby. Well, technically it is, but you know, we're going to play like it ain't for now. Um, but you know, I'm just sitting here like, girl, you ain't really had to get up in Aaron's ass like that, but you did need to tell him that, you know, he needs to calm that shit down. And that's exactly what Zach had told Fatima. Cause Fatima had said, why did you do that to him? He was like, Oh, excuse me, because he always talking. He always saying shit. And that is what's my irritation with Aaron. He's always butting in, all right, into Karen's business, everybody else's business. And it's just like, can, can, can she talk for herself? And I feel like, honestly, when I think about it, would it have escalated? It probably would have. No, I ain't even going to take that back. It would have escalated because as soon as Zach went on ahead and grabbed Karen, like he was trying to pull her up out the seat or whatever he did, he touched her. Okay, he didn't hit her. He just grabbed her, put his hands on her, whatever. But, um, yeah, it, it escalated. So, it would have did it anyway. So, I don't feel like he's to be blasted the way Andy did. But I understand it. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't feel no way about it because I don't like Aaron, but I'm just be fair. I don't think Andy needed to get in his ass as much as she did. But, um, yeah, Karen knew she was wrong. She was like, I talked to her in the morning. I apologize and all this stuff. She getting on Pam's ass talking about some, you know, she ain't sending no video. Pam's still up in the shop. And I'm sitting here like, why you got somebody working for you that you don't trust like that? Okay. Y'all could be good girlfriends behind the scenes or whatever. Y'all ain't got to be, you know working with each other if that's the case if i got to send you a video every time i close up the shop to make sure i close up the shop because you don't trust me make sure i turn off all the appliances and truth be told pam ass would have been gone <laughs> i'm just saying pam ass would have been gone okay moving on from that um you know when fatima get over there fatima gets over there to um uh, andy's house because andy told her Girl, I got three uh, bedrooms. You can come over here. And so, you know, she told her what was going on. She told her about how Zach uh, and her got into a fight and everything. And it was Andy that was like, you love her. You know, I mean, well, y'all love each other. Okay. So, it was the argument really that bad? Okay. Because she not wearing her ring. She said, I kept it on the counter. I said, girl, you ain't barely been wearing that ring anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. I really don't feel like Zach and Fatima getting married. So, there's that. But, you know, I could be wrong. Um, mind you, is the team finna come on next month? Ugh, anyway. I'm just sitting here like, girl, what is happening? Okay, like, this is a mess. This is a pure mess. And then Andy told Fatima, listen, you and Zach love each other, okay? Do not let, baby, my lips look good. Regardless of how I feel, my lips look good as fuck in this video. Anyway, she said, girl, don't let Karen fuck up your relationship. 
And then Carrie came through the door and I said, wow. She said, oh, okay. No, go ahead and say what you had to say. Don't let Karen do what? I said, bitch. You heard her. You heard her. Okay. And that was the end of the episode. Earlier, though, in the episode, also, we get the little scene with Gary coming up into the restaurant. Now, <clears throat> nobody else is up in that restaurant but um, Robin. He is at the bar still, you know. And so, Gary come over there trying to chop it up and trying to act fake, you know, with him or whatever. And, you know, talking about something. Don't you think you need to be at home or whatever? Because you got to worry about the call and all that stuff and woo, woo, woo. And Robin said, that's fine or whatever. Because he said, don't you need to be saving your money? Because, you know, you got to put your money all up into the call or whatever. And he said, uh, the money already in the bank, in, in, in the account. So, I'm good. And he was like, what you mean? And he was like, basically, I'm good. Don't worry about it. And so, you know, egg on his face. And Gary realized that, you know, whatever plan he was trying to do, Robin knows about it, and Robin knows Hayden is with him as well. And so, he's sitting there, and he and his feelings, as you're going to see next week, that, you know, he going to be like, I can't believe she betrayed me. Like, why would she tell him that? I said, what? You are really a bitch, okay? Gary is literally doing all of this, trying to get this man out of this company and out of this state or whatever, so that he will not be around Andy. And I'm sitting here like, so you're going to do that to any and every man that there is that comes across her because y'all are not in a relationship. Technically speaking, y'all are just fuck buddies and you the one that got feelings. And at this point, I truly feel like Andy is just playing him right about now, especially after all of this stuff, you know. And, and trying to keep him on so that they can understand, uh, see what, what else he got up his sleeve. And so he winds up calling Hayden. Hayden is up in there fucking that girl. Now, let me tell you something. I don't know if some of y'all listen to the podcast from Zane called Purple Panties it's a Lesbian Podcast. It was like a little, a little storytelling type of situation. And it was only one season. And it was like right before the pandemic hit. And it had like, what, six, eight episodes. It was like 20, 30 minutes long or whatever. And it was just literally like one of those novels little hood novels or whatever but it was lesbian-esque okay and the girl that plays tamara she was on there I, i'm sitting here listening to the voice and you want to know what her character was on there she played a hoe she played a hoe just like she playing on here but with the lesbian fact that she was trying to become famous be a famous actress or whatever so she was fucking around with the older um director for this um movie and she the lady had a wife and everything, and, you know, she was just doing what she had to do to get her stuff on. That's what it was. I was like, this voice sounds familiar, and she's still doing the same thing, but now she's doing it on screen. Girl, Hayden said, you're going to have to deal with that shit, Gary, um, because I'm over here dealing with this. Baby, Hayden is telling this lady, you ain't got to go nowhere. You ain't got to go to work. You ain't got to go find no job. You don't need no job. You can stay here. We can fuck all night, and I can get you a job. You can just stay here. I said, y'all only been fucking for a day and a half. You already want to get her, wife her, domesticate her, no job her, just have her there for a sex slave, sex slave for something. I'm, I was just like, damn, Hayden, it just takes. And that's how I realized that Hayden ain't had none in a long time. And I'm pretty sure, like I said before, Fatima was the last person that he fucked around with. And that was probably years ago. That's what it feel like. That's what it feel like, okay? And that's exactly why he was acting the way that he was acting. I said, child, all right, all right, Hayden, you whooped. You whooped. I don't never want that to happen to me. Hell no. Okay, moving on from that. Maurice is in jail. He winds up getting a new Sally. Cook's talking about son. I've been seeing you and you fine. And I said, what? <laughs> Mind you, he was up in there singing a, a, a Negro spiritual. Was he singing Swing Low, Sweet Chariot? And I'm sitting here looking at the Sally like, what? You know, he talking about son. The prosecutor got him up in there because he can't make bail. Because he want him to flip on his homeboys or whatever. And he not going to do that. And um, he was like, the prosecutor playing games with you too, huh? And uh, I would have piqued my interest too, the way that uh, Maurice did too. Like, uh, you you talking a lot. You talking a lot. And um, what you know, you you seem to know a lot about me, bitch. I don't, I don't understand what's going on. But what you need to do is you need to get on that top bunk 
um, and, and do what you got to do because, no, you're talking way too much, okay? I'm talking about he and that for bank fraud. And I'm sitting here like, bank fraud? Now, is it bank fraud and bank robbery? Because I was about to say, is this one accused homeboys or whatever? I don't know. Because you know how Tyler be doing six degrees of separation, but it really be not six degrees, but really 0.5 degrees. <laughs> I, it'd be that damn close and that damn convenient um, that he been up in there. He said he couldn't get the bail, so he been in there for a year or so. I said, damn, and that be how it is. You can't come up with bail, and that be the reason why motherfuckers still be up in jail so far before they even go to trial, because these trials be, motherfuckers be up in jail, and they trial day don't even be but, like, three years later, and they still up in there because they can't afford the bail. I'm like, damn, that's fucked up. Khalif Browder. Man, he rest in peace. Y'all know how that story went. Um, moving on from that. <sighs> right about my throat starting to hurt, but that's one. Two. Danny, Danny, Danny. So, Danny is still over there with Sabrina. I don't even give a fuck about that, okay? We gonna, we gonna dismiss all that. She finally leaves Sabrina place. Preston hasn't called her because she kept on looking at her phone. That's fine, whatever. That's what she was waiting for. She was thinking that Preston was gonna call her, be like, oh, I'm, I'm just playing with you. I'm gonna come back or whatever. You can come kick it and all this stuff or whatever. But it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen the way that she thought it would. Okay, fine, cool, 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 cool. She winds up calling somebody and she said, won't you come over? Okay, I'll be there in a minute. What happened? And I was like, is that who I think it is? And then he was like, she was like, but you ain't, wait a minute, you got my address? She said, he said, just text it to me and I'll be on my way. It's cute. The way that we predicted that this was going to happen and we really had, I don't know if we had like hope, a little slight bit of a hope, like damn Tyler, don't do this to us. But of course he did this to us and it's like, are you really serious? Are you really serious? Why? Why? And then he comes over and he talking about something you want to smoke. He looking at, and the first thing that really got me was the way that he was talking about her apartment. Oh, this is nice. This is this. I said, wait a minute, so you can squabble there, so you can squat there, so you can have a place to come to. What you sleeping at now? Okay. And then, Danny, you keep on talking about this ankle monitor, the ankle monitor, and all this stuff, but yet you about to fuck this man. All right. And I'm just sitting here like, this is disgusting. This is irritating. <coughs> Your friend over there talking about how she lost her job, right? She can't get up in the bank and feel no more, whatever, because of this shit. It's a stain on her record. And this is the motherfucker that did it. And you got this man over here, and Tyler has literally dragged this out and made it so that these friends don't say this man's name in front of this girl or whatever. And so she invites this dum-dum over because she's so dick-deprived. She can't even get enough of what she got. Bitch, you invited somebody that you was at your job with over before. Ba actually, actually, let's just go down the list. All these niggas that you didn't met at your job, maybe you need to stop meeting people at your job and meet them at other places, okay? Because first of all, they know where you work at and then you keep on bringing them to the house. Now they know where you stay at. What is your problem, Danny? First of all, you meet Preston, okay? That's fine. And he still, you know, that's a toss up. That's that. He was the most famous one out of everybody. Then you get Logan. Okay. That was the issue as well, because he popped up at your job. I mean, at your place 
without you even asking, okay, and giving the address or whatever, and then he didn't arrest your friend, set your friend up, okay? There's that, and now you got Q. Q set your friend up, put him up in jail, squatting up in um the other person's house or whatever, got your friend fired, you know what I'm saying? She don't know what she gonna do, she facing years, he facing years, and he just living free with an ankle monitor on. And you about to get this man some pussy that he been trying to get this whole time plus a place to stay. That's what you about to do. And I am over it. That man came up in there talking about the goddamn house and how it looked. Talking about do you want to smoke? Talking about something. Let me just show you that I ain't got no wires or no weapons on me or whatever. That's what he said. No weapons. So he stripped. And she was like, that right there is a weapon. Please put your stuff on. And he was like, that's fine, girl, but I'm finna go chill out there in your bed. She said, not in your not with your outside clothes. And I said, wait a minute, bitch. You should have said get the fuck out. And then I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. First you said it ain't that type of party or whatever but bitch you called him over there late at night and you called him over there late to tell him to come over to do what to just talk and then when he sit there and say i'm trying to be vulnerable i just want to lay up in there and cuddle i want you to hold me i said now hold on q <laughs> i ain't gonna lie that shit made me laugh and that shit made me go Bitch, I ain't never heard a nigga say no shit like that. It did make me laugh. I said, what? <laughs> to do what? And with him sitting there holding that goddamn pillow, I said, you want us to believe that you really just want to come over here and cuddle and you feeling vulnerable? I said, Q, we know you. Danny, you are dumb. The last guy that you brought up into that motherfucker attacked you. From your child. And now you finna have this one that you finna willingly give some sex to because he convinced you. And then you gonna ask him, do he have condoms? And then trying to say something, you trying to protest and act like you didn't have him come over there for sex. Talking about something, you can go or whatever. Why did you come or call him over there? Okay, because if you wanted just conversation, bitch, you could have just talked to him on the phone. I'm sitting here like... He's on to his next victim. He's on to his next mark. And he's been working this whole thing since he got at the uh got at the um freaking um airport. And I'm just like disgusted with this show right about now because of this one particular storyline. We have literally sat here for five seasons. Five freaking seasons, and we have seen the most toxic of the toxic relationships, minus the actual physical abuse of a relationship. But then again, let me take that back, because with Gary and Andy, he did physically hurt her. You know what I'm saying? Even if it was an accident, he let his anger get the best of him, but see, that's a, that's an issue as well. He's mentally abusive. He's emotionally abusive. You, you, you got your wife shooting at her, or coming up in her house and, and fighting her, and all this stuff, and all that, you know, you had that situation going on and now you're trying to take over her company just so that you can get a nigga up out the thing that got feelings for the wife i mean feelings for her okay imagine robin popped up now see robin you popped up at his house i mean at andy place or whatever just to tell her that you talked to gary and all this shit baby you could have called her on the phone for that and you could have seen her at work the next day but anyway i was just sitting here like are you serious the most toxic relationship on this thing is gary and andy's okay and it, they trying to make it seem like it's a cute thing, and it's not. And in reality, this shit is dangerous, okay? It is dangerous as hell, you know? This is the part where you get restraining orders. This is the part where you change your name. This is the part where you go out the fucking country just to get away from a motherfucker. That is what it is. And then you do this extra dangerous situation with Danny when she just got out of a fucked up situation. Nance came up in there and attacked her in her own home because he said that because she said that he had a little dick. Nance called her a bitch because she said he she didn't want him to stay up in there. Nance just really and, 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 and came to his job, came to her job, came to her job right after. Been through this so many times that he he don't even register his goddamn name and he don't even go to the police. Okay. Like, are you serious? And so now you're going to invite another criminal with an actual ankle monitor. Which ain't nothing wrong with that. But it's the fact of the matter that we know the situation. And you're going to literally put them in that harm's way. I'm over it, y'all. Like, Tyler, it's... Give it up. Nigga, give it the fuck up. Okay? Because at this point...
bring bring some of us in, bitch. It's some of us that sitting here watching this and we can make better scenarios that make sense. And granted, this is TV. TV ain't always about reality, but God damn, bitch, make it seem real. Make it seem real and plausible. I know we want a little bit of drama. I know we want to be like, oh, ah, but baby, this ain't the route that we was going. This ain't the, what, 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 what are you doing with this? Why are you fucking this shit? Mm, anyway. I'm, I'm finna get up off of here. Y'all tell me how y'all feel. I'll see y'all later. I gotta go gargle my throat. Peace.